Yo yo, welcome to lesson 42. Today, we're gonna build a simple Pokédex app. So the goal of our app is to just display a list of Pokémons, nothing too crazy. One of the most important things to do is to read the documentation of an API. Just think of it like an instruction manual. If you don't read it, you're not gonna know how to use the API. So let's read the documentation for Poké API. So one of the first concepts that we're gonna come across is pagination. And pagination in a nutshell is basically just a way to divide data. For example, let's look at Google. When you search for something, you only get around like 10 to 20 results. And then if you want more results, you basically just click next. The goal of using pagination is just to not overwhelm the user with too much data. And as you can see, if we want data, we have to make a request to the server. And if we want over a million results, that will take some time to come back. But if we ask for 20, that will come back fairly quickly. So to use pagination, we just have to provide a limit and an offset where a limit basically just states how many results we want back, and an offset just basically keeps track of our current position. Let's use this Pokemon poster as an example. So there are 10 Pokemons on each row, so let's set that as our limit. And we want to start our offset at zero so that we can get the first Pokemon. So for the first request, our limit will be 10 and our offset will be zero, and this will give us 10 Pokemons in total. Then for the next request, we want to keep the limit the same, but for the offset, we're going to add 10 to it, so that way we can get the next 10 Pokemons. If the offset was set to 1, then we will skip the first Pokemon and grab the next 10. And that's basically how pagination works. So the documentation also mentions that if we don't provide a resource ID or name, the API endpoint will return a paginated list of the available resources. So since we want to display a list of Pokemons, let's go to the Pokemon resource. And we also only care about the Pokemon itself, so let's click Pokemon. And here, as you can see, if we provide a specific ID or name, we would get that specific Pokemon. So now let's copy the endpoint without the ID or name and put it into a new tab. Cool, and just like that, we got a list of Pokemon data. So there's a total of 20 Pokemons here because the endpoint will default the limit to 20 if we don't provide our own limit. So if we want to use our own offset or limit, all we have to do is pass these parameters over to the endpoint. So all we have to do is add a question mark to the end of the endpoint. And then we use the name of the parameter followed by an equal sign, and then we pass it the value that we want to use. And if we want to add more parameters, all we have to do is add an ampersand followed by the name of the parameter and an equal sign to assign the value. Cool, so let's do a quick demo. I'm gonna change the limit to 10. And as you can see, instead of getting 20 Pokemons, we only got 10 Pokemons back. Nice, now that we understand pagination, we can start building our application. Cool, so let's go to script.js. Let's get rid of ditto so that we can get the paginated endpoint. Now let's click run. And just like that, we got the data into our code. So based on the JSON data, we only care about the results, which stores a list of the Pokemons. So on line nine, instead of getting the weight, which doesn't exist in this JSON, we can just put results here. And now let's click run. And as you can see, we got a list of object object where basically each object has a name and a URL for the Pokemon. Cool, and now the next thing we want to do is draw the UI. So first, we need to create a function called draw UI. So let's do function draw UI. And inside here, we want to call draw UI. And if you remember, I'm very big on state-based UI. So let's create a variable to store the list of results. So let's do let results equals empty list. And now let's copy results here. And now let's replace this with results equals JSON results. And now we just have to fill in the draw UI function. And before we write the logic for this function, we should write the HTML first. I'm not that good at designing, so I'm gonna add bootstrap to our project. So let's go to bootstrap and let's go to getting started and let's go to introduction. And we just need to copy this line and now let's add it to our head. So let's add it under this one and let's paste it. And now let's click run. And now Bootstrap is applied to our code. And now let's remove the hello world and let's create a div. And for this div, we're gonna give it the class of a container. And let's give this ID equals Pokédex. And inside this container, we're gonna add the rows of our Pokémons. So now let's go back to script.js. Instead of text element, let's call this Pokédex element. And then for get element by ID, we're gonna get the Pokédex. So now for draw UI, we just need to loop through all the results. So we can just do results dot for each. And then we open the parentheses and let's name the parameter Pokemon, and let's add the arrow function, and then the squiggle brackets. So let's create a div container to store this Pokemon. So let's do const container document dot create element, and here we'll call it a div. And now for this div, we want to do container dot classless dot add. So now we want to add the class row to it, 
and now let's add a name column so let's do cons name column equals document dot break element and now let's make a dev and now let's just copy the line above and put it below and now we'll call it name column dot class list add dot column and now let's create a name element so do cons name element equals document dot create element and let's put a p tag and now we can do name element dot inner text equals pokemon and now we can grab the name field from the json and cool and now let's add the name element to the name columns so now we can do name column dot append child and now let's append the name element and here i did the same for the other elements as well and now let's click run and see what happens and boom just like that we got a list of all of the pokemons but now our pokedex looks pretty boring because there's no images at all unfortunately the data that we get back only contains a name field and also a url field and there isn't a field for the images and that's one of the problems with using a public api in most cases it won't be built in a way that will work for every application so we'll have to do some digging around and after digging through the code a bit I found this link in the API where basically if you change this ID at the end, you'll get the Pokemon associated with that ID. So if we put three, we're going to get Venusaur. And based on this information, let's use this link to power the images in our app. So let's copy this link and let's go back to our code. Cool. So not to bore you guys, I went ahead and wrote the code. So basically I create a variable called image column and this one will call a function which creates the image column. And this takes in a parameter Pokemon. So now let's look at this function. So if we scroll up. Here we have this function called create image column. It takes in a Pokemon. And first things first, we need to get the ID of that Pokemon. So now let's look at this function, get ID from Pokemon. So all this function does is it takes the URL from the Pokemon, and then we're gonna replace any occurrence of this string here and replace it with the empty string. And at the end of this, we're gonna end up with just the ID. Cool, now that we have the ID, the next thing we're gonna do is create a column to hold the images. And then we create a image element. Then we take the image URL. And then we do string formatting to format the ID into the string. And now we set the source of the image and we give it a height and a width. And then finally we append the image to the column and then we return it back. So now inside the draw UI function, all we do is we add this image column that we created. And now let's click run. And that looks great. We got the pictures and also the names. And I'm sure you can do a way better job at designing than me. Cool. Now the last thing that we need to do is to add pagination. So I created a constant variable to keep track of the limit, and I created a variable to keep track of the offset. I set it to zero so that we can get the first Pokemon from the API. Now let's scroll down. Next, I turned our fetch call into a function, so that way we can reuse it for each subsequent call to this API. I also added string formatting so that we can add the offset and also the limit into our request. And once we're able to get the JSON successfully, we can add the limit directly to the offset, so that way we get an updated offset for the next call. And finally, we call get Pokemons so we can get the Pokemons right when the page loads. Cool, now let's go back to index.html. And underneath the Pokedex container, I added a button that will call the get Pokemon function when we click more. So now let's click run. Cool, now let's go to the bottom and now let's click more. Boom, there you go. The next 20 Pokemons are displayed right underneath. Congratulations, you just built a functional Pokedex app. Now all you have to do is just practice and build more apps. After building a few more apps like this, you'll have a solid resume and you can start applying for front-end positions. However, there's still a lot of things to learn, so don't rush it. Feel free to show off your Pokédex app in the comments below. I'd love to see what you've built. Also, try to build your own apps using other APIs. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next lesson.